Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to all of you on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost. We use as our order of worship this morning the order of divine service setting four with Holy Communion. We join now in singing our first hymn, hymn number 901, Open Now Thy Gates. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, Call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie and the Glory in Excelsis. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that for which I propose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar, shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and how inscrutable his ways! For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The epistle is from Romans chapter 8. So then, brothers, we are debtors. 
not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if, we li if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself prays, bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. Having heard the word of God, we make common confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. 
soul, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us upon Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one who Christian and Apostolic Church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our next hymn, hymn number 577, Almighty God, Your Word is Cat. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just as water comes down and waters the earth, so too does the word of God accomplish the Lord's purposes. The, the word of the Lord works. Not some of the time, but all of the time. This, it means that it always accomplishes what the Lord proposes. And it always succeeds in doing the thing for which the Lord sends it. The word of the Lord works. Not just some of the time, but all of the time. This is the promise given to us by the prophet Isaiah. 
And he gives this promise to us in an image so that the promise would be clear and we would be certain of the power and efficacy of the word of God. Isaiah uses the image of rain and snow. It's of moisture that comes down from heaven and always waters the earth. Now the moisture doesn't always fall on the same place, but when moisture comes, moisture always works. Water never sits there gliding on top of the ground without sinking in. No, it comes down and waters the earth. Even if it falls on soil that's saturated, it will sink down and move until it finds unsaturated earth so that it can water or saturate that earth. The point is this, water always works. Not some of the time, but all of the time. It accomplishes the watering of earth. And it always succeeds, making the soil bring forth and sprout with life. So as, uh, so as water, moisture, uh, with the moisture watering the earth, so it is with the word of God coming to us. As moisture works all the time, God's word works all the time. This is the prophet's point. Now you would have to admit we need that word of God to work like a dread, dry desert filled with thorns and thistles and badly in need of some rain or snow to come down and water the ground and give it life. So too, <coughs> in this world filled with sin and death, <coughs> the results of mankind's fall into sin we are in need of God's word. Isaiah was speaking then to the people of Israel and to us, thirsty and hungry, with no money to buy food and drink. The people of Israel had become helpless to help themselves. A vineyard having produced only stinking, rotten grapes, as Isaiah talks about earlier in his prophecy. On their own, Israel was lost, unable to produce that which would please the Lord. Cursed by the fall into sin, we are now those who are conceived in sin, so that we come forth in iniquity and are unable and are able to do no good thing and that is we can do no good thing that is pleasing in God's sight our sinful spiritual condition is like the desert dead and dry badly in need of something to give us life we cannot, by our own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord, or come to him. As we confess in Luther's explanation to the third article, we are the ones who are powerless on our own to do any good thing. And so, the Lord sends the word down from heaven to water the earth. He sends his son, that is, the word of God incarnate, who takes on flesh 
and blood to come down and water the earth. And water the earth. It does. The only begotten Son of God, who was not conceived in sin but by the Holy Spirit, so that he might bring life and immortality to life came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. He was in the beginning, that is, the word of God was there, that was in the beginning, took on flesh. And with that, he was crucified upon a cross, following after suffering under Pontius Pilate. He died on the cross to atone for our sins and water the earth with his precious blood. When the Son of God hung on the cross, having suffered hell, he was pierced by the sword, and from his side came water and blood which poured forth on the earth. As the word of God incarnate, Jesus Christ hung there on that cross. He certainly did, didn't appear to be powerful. He appeared to be defeated and powerless. So those who scoffed at him were confirmed in their suspicion, while those who had followed him were <laughs> tempted to despair. The word of God appeared to be powerless. But then, in glorious victory, like a sprout shooting from the earth after a good rain, the crucified and dead Jesus rose up from the grave. He burst forth from the dead, from the ground, alive. And well, that which was sown perishable and in great weakness and dishonor was now raised imperishable, immortal, as the victorious word of God, whose death only served to conquer death, but whose life now serves to give life to the world. So where does the Lord continue to give this life-giving moisture today? That is, the Lord Jesus has long since ascended to the right hand of God. From where does the heavenly moisture that gives life to this world continue to come? Where are we to look for that life-giving moisture, that life-giving moisture? forgiveness from our God. That forgiveness comes not from ourselves as we have already mentioned, for we know it is only by the power of the Holy Spirit who has called us by the gospel that we can receive the wonderful gift of forgiveness mercy, and grace. The Holy Spirit through the gospel calls us out of, dark, out of the darkness of sin into the light of the glory of God. The cross may be foolishness to a sin-filled world, but to us it is life and forgiveness. It is the very power of God. The death and resurrection of Jesus on behalf of sinners is the gospel, which is the power of salvation for all who believe and for all who will live victorious with Jesus in the land of the living. It is too. That wonderful gospel message comes to us in the holy waters of baptism, washing us clean of sin, giving us the name 
of Jesus. It is that as Jesus calls us to his altar, in with the bread and wine is his gospel of body and blood, which cleanses us from our sins and gives us eternal life. All who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior have this promise. The promise that came from the prophet Isaiah. The promise that comes from Christ himself. It is given for us to know and to trust so that we might be certain that the word of God will always work. No matter the setting or how bleak the situation, the death and resurrection of Jesus reveals that the word will accomplish the Lord's purposes and will succeed in bringing life, life eternal to the world. The world is full of sin and death. The curse of the fall still hovers over us causing us to be born in sin and to commit sin. We are all born sinful and unclean and are unable to do any good thing. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent forth his son our lord jesus christ who took on flesh to dwell among us through his death appeared to be the end though his death appeared to be the end it was now become the source of life so that his glorious resurrection is the proof that he has overcome the curse and brought life and immortality to light. There is now no doubt. It is the word of the Lord that accomplishes the purposes of the Lord. Jesus Christ was, has succeeded in the thing for which he was sent. He was sent to bring us life. And through his death, that life is certain. Jesus Christ died and rose again so that you might have life and have it abundantly. That life comes through Jesus Christ, who like the rain and snow that comes to the earth and waters the earth, comes to each and every one of us to wash away our sin and to help us to grow into eternal life. Amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We rise for prayer. <clears throat> Father of mercy, our sins have merited thorns and briars and yield only trouble and strife. <clears throat> Forgive our transgressions and discipline us against temptation that we may rejoice in your name and the promise of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Almighty God, you send forth your word as abundantly as rains upon the earth. Grant that we would never take your generosity for granted, <clears throat> but would seek the help 
and refreshment of your word in every circumstance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, continue to sow your word through the fields of the earth. Bless pastors and missionaries as they proclaim your truth. Prepare the hearts of all who hear to believe and yield abundant fruit. We pray especially this day that you would be with teachers and helpers and especially the students as they gather today to learn your word through fun and your holy word in Vacation Bible School this afternoon here at Trinity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless parents with faithfulness as they plant your word into their children, that they may grow steadfast among the cares and troubles of this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, look with favor on those who celebrate birthdays, including Braxton Tullifson, Brenly Moran, Alexandra Fiala, Esther Nelson, Kayla Blum, Kaylin Moran, Mitch Schrader, Casey Nesmo, Ken Aniker, Roddy Hansen, Candence, Ella, Artis Cron, Kaylee Hamilton, and Marlene Wolf. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen their trust in your goodness and bless them with your abiding love all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Lord God, look with mercy upon those who suffer from illness of body or mind. Be especially with Kay Gore, Leola Gore, Addison Jansen, Bunyang Singsarachan, Puma Zavonarath, John Yeesker, Donna Bacallier, Christy Amston, Danny Porsche, Lynn Schrager, Caleb Reuger, a young woman struggling with anxiety and depression, a man with cancer, and all those who suffer illness. Attend to the daily cares and needs of the Kent and Kim Aniker family, Gary and Joanne Yunker, the Jason and Darla Cruiser family, and Mike States. Give them healing. Comfort them with your presence. Grant them patience to endure suffering and assure them at all times that they are your dear children and that the glory of Christ awaits them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your spirit calls us by the gospel to the new life of faith. We praise you and acknowledge you as our Lord. Deliver us from the devil's temptations that we may live under you and serve you in righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Ho Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we gather our offering.
we rise as we continue with the servant of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with <clears throat> angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessing of forgiveness. Life and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen our lord jesus christ on the same night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn, hymn number 921. On what has now been sown. God's blessings to all of you as you have worshipped here today. May God, through his word, uh, that incarnate word, Jesus Christ, forgive you all your sins and give you eternal life. Um, there's a lot of announcements in the, the bulletin. I'm just going to let you read those. I just want to bring your attention to one thing that's happening here um, this afternoon. Um, actually, it starts this morning. If I'm not mistaken, it begins at 11 o'clock, and that is our vacation Bible school. Um, if you know of any young people um, uh, that would enjoy attending, um, let them know and get them here. Um, it looks like they've got several events uh, planned. They're going to feed them. Um, they're snacking along the way. I don't know. I must be hungry. Um, but there are games and especially um, the word of God will be brought to them. God's blessings once again to all of you.